right. What's up, peeps? What is happening? Talk to a brother. Hope everyone is doing well. Let me see if I can locate my pop-out chat. We will get started. Still locked and loaded. I ain't going no. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, because we got a lot to cover today. So it should be a good stream. It should be a good stream. So who else is here? Okay, um, what's this? Lowski V. Happy to be. I'm listen. I'm glad you're one of the top ones, man. Glad you are here. Glad you are here. Yeah, man. We got a lot to get to today. Trying to work out these technical issues. I don't know. Maybe in the future I'll use a different streaming software. But <laughs> I move my um drums into the um what will be the live room and now that i'm speaking i hear the tom humming so the drama never ends never ends y'all i'm glad you are here no i'm not trying to be about it with the hat on my head it's just the lights are blinding me and it's like right in front of my eyes so gotta protect my eyes man from the blue light so talk to me how's everybody doing I hope very well. This should be a good one today. Mr. Mr. Smooth is going to be the master of ceremony in many respects. I'll be fielding a question the um, stream. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. It's, it's as though you need, when you're streaming, it's as though you need a, um, a, a dedicated, I remember back in the day, it, it, well, especially when you're dealing with um, post-production studios, they have a T, I think a T1 line coming into the studio that's not connected to anything other than client files, you know, and um, it remains uninterrupted. But as I'm looking at the streaming software, I keep getting it to zero kilobits per second and then it gets up to 2000, I'm at 83. So I'm going to have all this stuttering business and it's like, man, crazy annoying. But I guess I'll work it out at some kind of way. I, I don't know why it's doing this, but um, bear with me. As, well, Mr. And Mrs. Smooth, man, how you doing, man? Uh, talk to me. How, how was your week? You know, and, and, and Lusky V, you too, man. You got to weigh in. You got to tell me how your week was, man. Um, let me know if you guys are experiencing any technical glitch you're in as the, um, as the stream is coming through. I've been using OBS and 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 I'm about to um, you know, leave them for another, if you will, because this is becoming crazy, you know. But you know, I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, according to YouTube, the stream looks a little. It says it's it, okay. Yes, you're not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth stream. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I really don't know what that means. So um. Let's see, let's see. Uh, let me see who's on. It says I have two concurrent playbacks. I don't know how to work this out with this OBS business. OBS is not the best of streaming softwares and I think I'm gonna have to I had a good week okay video is choppy but the sound is smooth all right uh, sorry about the choppy video folks one week we're good two weeks we're not good it's you know when you did listen <laughs> you know anytime you use anything for free man you're gonna have to expect problems you know but um I guess I'm gonna have to buy another subscription to Ecamm live is what a lot of other people are using so it goes more money being spent as though I haven't spent enough. But Lou, Lou, sound is not choppy, but it does sound like you have. Rever oh, yeah, that's the Tom. I, I, I moved my drums into the live room. I got some work that I need to do in here. So you'll hear the Tom 
you know, like I was saying, the sympathetic, sympathetic vibration of the resonant head. You know, every time you'll say certain um, words that fall within the um, frequency range, it'll cause the head to vibrate. So that's what that is. But um, yeah, man, uh, drop frames, 61%. Good God. That's crazy. So six out of every 10 is being dropped. But that's good. That's good. So, um, yeah, we got a, a, a few um, um, antelope users here, I hope, you know. I'm going to jump to the question of the day in a minute, and um, we'll get with it. So, who else is here? Who else is here? I'm looking at DJ MVP is in the house. That's good, man. I'm glad that you are here, man. Uh, nothing up with me. I had a weird start of the week. Um, I had someone reach out to me about some work that they needed me to do. <laughs> and uh, uh, long story short, I think they assumed that they were going to either get an extreme discount on all the work that they wanted me to do. And um, I guess I had to cause them to suffer sticker shock, you know, because I told them, you know, you want it done right, it's going to cost you some money. So when they got the actual proposal, they were like, okay. Thank you, <laughs> but no thanks. I'm like, okay, now you know. I had another client like that a long time ago. It was funny because it was like every year, I don't know if it was a guilt thing with this person or not, but they would keep contacting me, asking me what my rate was. So um, one year I just broke down. I was like, why do you keep year after year after year asking me the same thing? I, I, I'm a little confused. And um, never really got a direct answer. But in the end, they wound up hiring me to um, um, edit a, um audio book for them in the end. I, I don't know if they were trying to compile their pennies over those years or what, but in the end, um, they wound up, you know, hiring me to do the edit for the audio book. So <laughs> I guess all is well that ends well, man. Okay, so um, Mr. Mr. Smooth says he's having a great week. Family is good. Excellent. Just staying in quarantine and getting plans. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Good, man. Good, me. Yo, man, this quarantine, this whole COVID thing, man, just thrown my year. And I, I'm not the only one. I'm not trying to be play um, victim here. But it's caused my year to be so sideways, you know, in, in so many respects that I don't even know. Um, and this is, I don't know if anybody else can, can identify with it. I don't really even know what normal is going to feel like after this, you know. So we'll see. We'll see, but um, yeah, man, this is this is weird. Let me turn it, keep an eye on this. I'm getting a little fancy because I have the um switcher. I can reach right out and and change the um volume on the mic if I need to, which has an up down an up and down volume control. So I'm using an, a Blackmagic Design A10 Mini, which is like um a godsend. You know, you could connect four cameras up to this thing, so. It's all good, man. Oh, Unique the Poet. What's good, my brother? Albuquerque NM is in the hizzy. That's good. That's good, man. Glad that you all are here. So we got a, a, a quorum. We got Lou, Lewski V, DJ MVP, Double M Smooth, and Unique the Poet. So I guess I'm going to... Um, Begin with the question of the day, okay? And let's jump down to that. And that is, which antelope are you or which will you be? I'm gonna let Mr. Mr. Smooth jump right on in there because he will be my honorary moderator for today as a longtime antelope user. I'm a new Jack, just getting my feet wet, and anybody else who is here who has been with Antelope for any duration of time can jump right in. But Mr. Mr. Smooth, take it away. Tell everybody what you're using, how you use it, the genre of music that you're working on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your experiences with the equipment, um, what's the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, talk to us. I'm sure he'll be typing in a minute. And in the meantime, anybody else wants to uh, chime in with any 
Warren, there's a huge delay on his end. Sounds like I'm in the tunnel. Okay. <laughs> I think you're hearing, like I was saying, the um, Tom. I have a, I have my drums in here, so you might be hearing the, the um, big Tom vibrating. You know, it's funny. You know, and plus I'm on the lab again. I got the lab situation, you know, kind of worked out pretty good. But um, it's all good. Oh, okay. So here we are. Mr. And Mrs. Smooth has just weighed in and we will start with him and we will follow up with DJ MVP. He says he has the discreet four and they will share their experiences. Hope they got speedy typing fingers because I'm going to jump through and two. Are you on the low end? If this is where you want to go, this is DJ MVP setup currently. The discrete four. Um, and he could jump in at some point and share also. I'll, I'll be reading your, your, your responses as we go along. And uh, Mr. Mr. Smooth will do the same. He's currently running an antelope Orion. Not the Galaxy, but the Orion 32 plus Gen 3. We have the same units. I'm just getting to the party. He's been there for a little while. So um, what are your experiences? Mine have been good. I have my opinions. I was working through a few things this week. Um, just trying to get my feet wet um, while they're typing. I'll just step in for a second. But um, the Matrix, by far, I think, man, you know, I don't work in their marketing department, but that is huge. That's a huge, 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 huge selling point. My God. Um, it's a digital patch bay. It's a digital patch bay. I mean, you literally can, with having a total of 32 in, 32 in and 32 out. Now, on any given day, I'm not going to use more than 16 tracks, okay, for any given session. But beyond that, the ability to configure the matrix like your all-in-one digital patch bay to connect any of your hardware units patch bay man i mean you know i'm like i said i'm just getting my feet wet with the whole thing but the potential that's there with that alone makes um antelope or rather places antelope in a class by themselves. I don't think there is another, and any of you, if you have any other information, I don't think there's another that has um, um, another manufacturer that has a similar software built into the, the, the functionality of their, of their units. So, yeah. So, um, Mr. Mr. Smooth, the digital patch bay is like none other. The Matrix, yes. And it has 24 channels. And see, that's another thing. Um, someone mentioned to me, well, you know, keep your options open about using the unit with, um, for, or, or be prepared to possibly upgrade to an HD system. Although I understood that statement, my workflow as of late I've been using a, a lot fewer um, plugins. And even last week when I was working, I found myself actually reaching for the audio suite plugins in Pro Tools. So, um, you know, to each his own, I understood where he was coming from in order to have that additional horsepower that at an HD or an HD um, native system will afford you having coming from an HD system. I understand the horsepower that's on tap, but um, I don't think I'm going to be needing it in that fashion. One, two, Thunderbolt is nothing more than PCIe over a little skinny cable. So I think um, all is going to be good on, on that end. You know, um, let's look at some statements. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, DJ MVP says he's finding the routing a bit confusing. That I have to agree with you. Because although I, under I understand the premise of how they want the software to operate, the, the way they have it designed, I think, could be done a little bit better 
to more um, accommodate those who are used to working in a studio where the top part of your patch panel are sends and the bottom are returns. They have the line in on the send level. And if I'm employing my knowledge based on um, using a patch bay as a sends being the top level of patch points, using, looking at the word line in on an output is not making sense to me. So I, I'm, so, I'm sure that as more people um, voice this concern, um, I'm not sure if, if you, DJ MVP, are, 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 are um, identifying or empathizing with what I'm saying in terms of the functionality of it, but you know, I intend to probably email them to that effect because it just seems, it seems to me like um, the line outs should go to the top, okay? And the line ins as returns should come to the bottom, the, the label line out, line in. The only thing that's very clear to me is USB play. You know, play is output. That makes sense. But to have line ins at the top of that, to me, makes no sense. So, yeah, I definitely can, can understand that the, the, your, to your point about, you know, being a little bit um, confusing. And I'm sure that's something that as more users take advantage of its power, well, they'll address it more. You know, but it's definitely um, by far the single most um, significant piece of software that outside of their DSP plugins, out, you know, that's the most significant piece of this um, system is that matrix. And, and like I said, I don't think there's another, um, you could do something similar to that, but you have to use manual patch points or you would have to use something like the um, Dangerous Music uh, Liaison, you know, where you can patch, keep units hard, where units connected and patch in that fashion, so. Um, okay, let's jump back. Miss Mr. Smooth, who is fielding questions, says that DJ MVP, it was like that for him for the first few days. But um, a lot of times we just want plug and play and go, and I would say take a day and really dive in. That's true. <laughs> you know, sometimes we want to get put the do this, as they say, the um, cart ahead of the horse. You know, um, and that's just um, anxiety of wanting to just jump in and start playing. You know, and uh, it, it's, gonna, it's everything has a learning curve. You know, and I'm right there with you, DJ. So. Um, We'll go through this together, <laughs> right? Um, he also, DJ, um, not DJ, um, Mr. Mr. Smooth says if anyone wants to reach out and, you know, hit a brother up just with some information, you can do that. Um, he's been at it for a minute, so, um, you know, that would be helpful. Yeah, it's an inverted patch bay. Man, he, that's the best way to describe it. It's inverted. But, um... If you're trying to present a piece of equipment as a pro piece, I think you should keep it as conventional as possible to reach and to um, accommodate the, the, the understanding and the workflow of as many pros as you possibly can. That just helps you along the way. If so, you know, my, um, my comments about a certain company that I had before. You know, professionals want to be able to jump in, work, okay? You know, and if they got to stop and pause and rethink about what they're about to do, you know, it time becomes money, you know, so you don't want that to happen. All right. So let's see what we got. Uh, this is Mr. Okay, Mr. Pirate Brain, what's up, man? Yeah. But okay, Mr. Mr. Smooth, another comment. With all the confusing layout, the AES, the analog, the digital to analog side is phenomenal. The width, the depth, the image, and the clarity is amazing. That's true. Um, I was sold after the Rosanna test. You know, I, I looked in, in I, like I said, I read Al Schmidt's book, and I saw the, the mic setup for Toto. And to be able to hear the room mics, um, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you have been in a larger room like um, 
you know, some of the big, bigger studios, if you've ever gone to a studio that had a room that was 24 feet by 15 with about 15 or 16 foot ceilings, then you're going to hear, even if you're in there just talking, you know, you're going to hear a um, ambience to the room. The room has a tone of its own, you know, and to be able to hear that coming back at you through a digital unit, I was like, wow. I was sold at that point. Because, um, you know, that's one of the biggest beefs that I have with, um, or had rather with my HD system, you know, is that you, you got great horsepower, but the clarity at times. And the one time that I did reclock it, I was like, wow, the mids are like kind of a little bit more detailed, you know. The bottom end felt a lot more solid. So I was like, hmm. And a lot of people that I know that, that um, have HD systems, they, they, they clock it on an external clock, be it a Big Ben or some other company that's out there, you know. So, yeah, they, they put it all in the box, man. All of it is in the box, you know. So, yeah. Clint Wilson is in the hizzy. What's up, man? Glad you are here. We got Mr. And Mrs. Smooth moderating in many respects. I put him on the spot. You know, he's lucky he ain't got no camera because the brother would be sitting by sipping his beverage while he carried the ball. Because he is a longtime antelope user. And in order to become informed, you have to be willing to sit at the feet of those who have borne the heat of the day. So I'm a new Jack, just getting to the party. He's been there for a while. So anybody else with any other questions? Mo Styles is in the hizzy. All right, we got a good, good, good crowd tonight, man. We got the, the videos acting up, man. You know, I'm about to say goodbye to um, OBS, I was saying earlier, because the same things keep happening with their software. It's open source, and um, God only knows, you know, when they go from, and I, you know, the, the, the bad thing that I did, okay, this is my fault somewhere, too. I updated it two days ago without running extensive testing. You'd think I would know better, but again, this, you know, live streaming, I've just been doing it since uh, about earlier part of this year, and I'm learning the ins and outs as I go, and at the same time, I'm finding out who the players are and who those who are perpetrating. And right now, man, I'm telling you, OBS, y'all is on borrowed time with it, brother. Borrowed time. All right. Mr. Mr. Smooth, I'm just here to learn to, yeah, well, listen, you know, um, you learn by doing. You know, you learn by doing. You know, if you started on Monday and I just started on three days later, you got more experience than me. <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, you could, you cross that road, you could tell the brother which potholes to look out for. So, yeah, that's what it's, this is about. Anybody else? Um, let's jump back to, really quick, um, DJ MVP was talking about he has a discrete four. So I don't know if you're still here. He says he's using USB. And he can't have the antelope plugged into, uh-huh. One can't have... Oh, okay, DJ, you're going to have to, um, you know, um, on your point, I'm using the USB one and can't have the antelope plug in directly into the door. Okay, I'd like to um, know what, 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 what we're talking about. Truth. Okay. All right, all right. All right. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a hold of um an understanding of what DJ MVP's um statement was. I'm not sure if you um I'm not sure if you you if you were talking about you using it with USB one because I know that that won't work. I think you need um I think USB two is 480 megabits per second. You know, anybody want to fact check me on that? But if you're using USB 1, you might have a problem, you know. That might not work, you know, as 
you would want it to. So that's something you want to look into. All right. You know, that's the only thing about um, you USB. It can become fickle at times. I told you all what happened to me when I was updating the software. It lost connection for a minute. And I tell you, the whole unit um, suddenly bugged out and shut down. And it went to the screen that I had to spend like hours figuring out how do I solve this problem only to realize I needed a box check. So, yeah. Um, Mr. Mr. Smooth says he wanted to talk about the software as well because I know around the web antelope users are having hiccups and problems with the software side. Um, the only thing I have to say about the software that I found confusing is that the mixer part, um, the mixer is not laid out intuitively. I, you know, I've, I've worked on enough consoles and been around enough mixing boards to know all of them are pretty much the same. I think they would have done themselves. I think that's the strength of a company like UA. They got the whole console thing down good. You look at it, you can understand it. When I looked at this thing, I'm like, yo, what in the world? I, I was playing with it, and I understand they have Mixer 1, Mixer 2, 3, and 4. How that relates to the... the um, the, the matrix is where I think the strength of the mixer is. Because uh, for most people, they'll use the mixer as a, um, as a control unit for headphone mixes. I'm more of the, the type, I use a more me system. I, I'd rather just point the talent in the direction of this is you, this is the track, or if you need to hear more bass, turn this knob, like that. That's the purpose of the Furman that I have. Or if, you, you, if you've ever used the Avion or the, I had a Hero Technologies unit for a minute that died and I got rid of it um, and went back to the Furman because that thing is like bulletproof. But um, I understand the premise of how the mixers are supposed to work. One would have to be willing to dive in deep and set up um, headphone mixes that are dialed in in a specific way that they like to work. That's where the strength of that comes in at. Now, how that translates to when you're in Pro Tools is a whole other story. Okay, so, um, you know, let the buyer beware, as they say, you know. But let's jump up and at the source is in the hizzy. Aha. Why well, I don't you could have got the Cranborn. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, Cranborn, listen. I don't know how many of you all can go back and Cranborn and, and I have had a bit of an issue in the past. Um, they apparently did not carefully go over the video that I did. Um, some of the hate mail that I have received had comments like, um, how can you criticize something when you've never used it? I'm like, you apparently did not watch the video because I never criticized it. I said it wouldn't work for me and it's a very niche product. I'm not stupid. I've been in business for a long time. I understand how niche marketing works. Um, I can call up Quite a few people I know right now that are running commercial spaces and ask them point blank, will you replace this with that? And nine times out of 10, the answer will be no. No. Maybe if I was, maybe if they were building another room, that's one thing. But it's not for everyone. I'm not saying their products are bad. On paper, it looks great. The functionality for a person who's just coming to the party, wanting to get into summing, wanting to get into a 500 series, wanting to have great converters on board, I think it's great. It's a niche product. I, I would never say it's bad. I think it's ingenious, but it's just for a specific audience. And when you niche down that far in marketing, what happens, I'm, I'm putting my business head on. You can niche down a product. You can become specific. When I was talking to people about mixing and mastering, you could be a person that mixes and masters for 
the healthcare community. Boom. They need those services. That's niche marketing, which means you took it from here to here to here. You know, Cranborn has taken a product and niched it down to a 500 series onboard converters, as well as summing. That's for a particular person. You know, it's not a replacement product. It's a niche product. So we're talking about antelope today. Um, if you're having good luck with, um, with the um, crab one, God bless you. I am not mad at you. If it's working, it's working. You know, if it's working, it's working. I'm not saying it's bad. I think it's a great, great looking product. You know, if you're having success with it, excellent. You know, to each his own. We have to buy tools that are going to work for us and for the job at hand. And if it's working for you, it's the best tool for you, period. You know, regardless of what I say, you know, you know, I've just um, been in enough circumstances to see how products function in a professional environment. And the type of product that it is, if you're trying to stick it in a commercial operation, you better have two of them because you don't need downtime. But let's jump back on the antelope bandwagon. We're going to jump back. And um, who, oh, who is that, that that just said that? At the source. Yeah, man. I am glad you are here, man. I am glad you are here, though. Mr. Mr. Smooth. My moderator for the day is saying, you don't know what the problem is in particular, if you can uh, dedicate a computer, yes, yes, and yes. Good point about dedicating a computer that is optimized for audio. Um, I haven't been on the Windows platform in over, I won't lie, about 26 years. The last time I was on the Windows platform, the computer failed so miserably and I lost client files and I was fired after that. So I was actually using Logic. Um, I think it was Logic. Logic. Um, right after they transitioned from Uniter. Um, no, what was it? Notator. Notator Pro on, a, on an Atari. Then I went to. So, yeah, man. Um, after I was on the Windows platform and had that blue screen of death, I went out the next day and bought a Mac after getting fired and never looked back from that point. So, nah, I can't. But you need to make sure. And in the case of the antelope, um, what I'm noticing is that you're going to need to make sure that if you are getting deep into your relationship with the matrix, then you're going to have to make sure that that computer has a lot of horsepower and it's not an internet. Well, I think, Mr. Mr. Smooth, you're going to have to tell me whether you do the same. But I'm noticing that um, for some reason, the unit seems to need to handshake with the USB and the software coming from the website. I'm not sure if that's been your experience, but every time I power it up and I power the software up, it seems to have to handshake. And I don't know whether or not you need to be connected to the internet for that to happen. So, again, I'm just getting to the part. You have to um, let me know. DJ MVP has weighed back in. And he said, what I meant was when I used Studio One on the envelope, the pack plugins are not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, here's a um, Mr. Mr. Smooth. You got to tell me if you're using the the um afx plugins and how you're using them you know um if you can this is for mr mr smooth if you can and you have been if you can go into the comments after we're done and put down your workflow in terms of using the dsp that's afforded to you on the um orion uh that will probably help a lot of people out because i'm in the same boat i can't understand like the workflow between the Apex plugin and how it's being routed and you know I'd rather just use it in its most simplistic way to get me from point A to point B as opposed to trying to figure it out as I'm going so that would help if you could help um, the community out and um, 
Dell Mixed It. Yo, what's up, man? So you made it to the discussion. Um, not much. We're just talking about which we had the question of the day, which was which antelope are you? Are you on the low end? Are you the mid guy with the Zen Tour? Which is quite a nice looking piece, y'all. I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Are you on the high end? With this beast of a 64 channel unit. Crazy. This thing is massive. Or you like me. With just 32 channels. And doing your thing. You know. Um, um, the biggest um, benefit. I w and, and I'm, and I'm going to step out from underneath the covered wagon. For those of us who are over 40. And have been doing this for a little while. If you've been. If you've worked in analog, this is your unit. This is what we've been missing in terms of the depth, the front to back depth. And, and like I said, you, you want to know what these units sound like? Buy from a, a, a reputable dealer that will give you a 30-day return. Go to iTunes and give it the Rosanna test. Once you hear them room mics, you're going to be like, yo, that's it. That's it. Right there. And I haven't heard it. You know, you get, I get good clarity from Apogees, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm, you know, uh, the UAE system has a character and a sound of its own, which you have to bring more of the, the, the upper mids and highs out. But the antelope seems to give that to me right out of the box. And if that's what you're looking for, that's most definitely the way to go. So let's jump over. And I'm... Um, Mr. Mr. Smooth, if you could answer that question for DJ MVP, that would work. At the source, says Def Max. Yes, at the source offers some very good um, advice. Max the computer out. Um, I'm, I'm finding out I'm going to have to up the amount of RAM. In my, I'm at 16 gig, but I think I'm going to just do that. Max it all as far as much as I, RAM as I could put. Because I don't know how much these AFX plugins, what if I start getting turned out and become a plugin junkie? Highly unlikely. But what if, you know, um, I'm going to need that, that RAM horsepower. So, ah, I'm just, please don't get smart. <laughs> no, no. Cranborn is a great company. Don't get me wrong. The, the, the criticisms that I had about their product, and I'm going to leave it at this, was that, and I'll say this, if I were on a marketing team, we would have to make sure that if we're marketing something, marketing a product costs a lot of money. We have to be very specific as to who this product is aimed at, period. Even antelope. Man, if I was on a marketing team, you know I'd be knocking on everybody's door in New York. Yo, check this out. Because the connectivity and the amount of I.O. that you get in a single unit and the clock and the matrix, those are selling points. Those are selling points. So, you know, let's jump forward, forward. Unique the Poet says, I'm in the market for a new interface and I'm still deciding on an antelope or motu. Have you had any experience with Motu? Uh, the closest experience I had was when I was working with the composer Gerald Trotman. He's a film composer out in um, California right now for Pete the Cat. Gerald is one of my inspirations. He's one of the reasons that um, I wound up, you know, getting back to music school to finish my degree. Um, great composer. And when I first met Gerald's funny thing, he was like, oh, I got a little studio, you know, you come by and do some tracks. And I get there, the man had a, had a spread, but he used a lot of film composers, use Motu equipment. Um, that Again, niche marketing. You want to know who, who's who, who's using um, Motu primarily? A lot of film composers, tons. That's the product that they niche down to. You know, when they're reaching out, that's who who's primarily using the product. Now, um, Terrence Blanchard, I don't know if you guys know who Terrence Blanchard is, a, a, a world-renowned, great jazz um, 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 trumpeter, as well as 
the composer of most of Spike Lee's movies, he was his Motu. So, yeah, man. Motu is um, a, a decent option on the lower end of the price point, you know. So, there's nothing wrong with Motu. Um, I'm just very... And I, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'm very specific about what I want to hear. You know, and, and, and um, that's with the preamp. And if you guys stay tuned to the end, I got an unboxing I forgot to tell you, you know, uh, about some equipment that I just bought. Um, so you guys stay tuned to the end. But we're going to be up in a little bit. We've been at it for about 42 minutes so far. But, um, yeah, I'm very specific about what I'd like to hear. You know, and this week I heard the um, company Retro Stay Level, I think it is, the um, compressor, and was turned out. I was like. Oh, wow. 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 Crazy. I can't, I mean, I can't afford to drop another three grand on just a unit like that. But the sound is incredible, you know. And um, it's definitely, if you're looking for the one golden compressor to buy, and you got a few grand just laying around and you want to go out and buy something, give that a listen, man. Crazy. But let's jump forward. Mo Styles says, I'm right there with you on the Discrete 8 or the Mo2 Pre ES. Yeah, Mo2, um, I forget the guy um on YouTube. He uses Mo2 a lot. The um <laughs> he, and he talks like Arnold, he talks like that. But real nice guy. Um David, I think he uh what was this? Mix? I don't know. I'll put the link in the description. But he he's definitely a Mo2 guy. And um uh, he swears by this stuff. And he puts out some really good sounding um, um, music, too. Killer guitar player. So, yeah, man. Motu is the bomb diggity. Um, let's jump forward. Same here. 64 is a little overkill, but I hate to need it. And I have, that's true. Well, yeah, 64 inputs. Um, I think that's aimed at permanent installs, like in a, a console-driven environment, you know? Even I'm fine, even I found 32 channels. I'm like 32 channels. So. But see, the way I'm gonna use it, the connectivity of the matrix is going to allow me to use more of my output here now. You know, so that's my intent. You know, but let's uh move forward real quick. Mr. And Mrs. Smooth has sent a message to at the source studios and says it depends on how you look at it. Okay, so that is a private conversation of which you all can peek at. And I'm going to look at um, Links for Life has just said I've had a Motu 8 Pre and it's really clean. No, Motu has been around for a while, man. Um, and I like the interface on Digital um, Performer. I really like the in interface on that. So uh, kudos to them. And they ain't going nowhere, man. At the Source Studio asks, do I have a console? Had. I owned in my life Two pro consoles, one by Allen and Heath, the GS uh, series, which I love. And that was a British board. I loved it. I sold it to Allen. I sold it to Allen Glover. Um, as a matter of fact, if you go on iTunes and listen to any of his music, chances are if Allen mixed his records, Allen Glover, The Anticipated Dawn, and The um, Kings of Infinite Space. I was the tracking engineer. He mixed it. But um, both of those were, were tracked on the Allen and Heath, you know, so, yeah. And I owned a 64 input um, Tascam M2600, and that was a, a, a beast of a console, but the channels just started to fail, and um, a friend, another friend of mine, Mark Brooks, a, a bass player here in the Bronx, he bought it for me. And I sold it to him for, like, pennies on a dollar, you know, after spending nearly, how much I paid, like about $4,000 for that thing, man, no, so that was a lot of cash I dropped, and I was, I, I needed that many inputs, because I was working um, with ADATs, XTs at the time, I had 20, no, 48 channels, 24 channels of ADAT, brother can't count, 48 channels, that's six ADATs, I had three ADATs, and a BRC, as a matter of fact, if you go on, my social media, one interview that I did with EQ Magazine, 
you'll see the board and you'll see the ADATs in the rack. And that was back in 98, you know, so yeah, man. Let's jump forward. At the source, listen, thanks for that question, man. I appreciate it. Mr. 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 Okay, Mo Styles. Okay, so Mr. Smooth and Mo Styles, y'all got a conversation happening. I love it. Okay, um, Mr. Smooth says the answer to G DJ MVP's question is in the chat. A few back. Okay. Okay, so that's for DJ MVP. Good, 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 good. I like this. I like it. Okay, so at the source, follow-up question. Geez, I hate to see those SSL consoles, even the smaller ones, like 20,000. I forget the name, but it's not the big. Oh, yeah, um, the, the new one that they have out is real nice. Duality? It's killing. You know, the only beef that I had with SSLs back in the day, they had this sound. Um, lend itself great to pop music, but I, I remember when um, <laughs> I saw George Thompson this way and he says, if you was in the stream, whack. Yo, the stream is whack, B. I, I told you I'm about to give OBS up, man, because this free software is killing me. You know, you can't configure it. Once you upgrade, update it, stuff gets out of whack. So, yeah, man, the, the, the stream is, is a little iffy. I'm watching the um, drop frames. I'm at 59% drop frames. So, yeah, man, bear with a brother today. But that was funny, George. Yo, y'all are crazy. <laughs> yeah, the stream is whack. I ain't gonna lie. You know, but, um... Where was I? Oh, yeah, the SSL duality. But back in the day when I was working with um, Dana Reed, not working with him, but Dana used to, um, um, there's a small slapback delay. Yeah, you guys are hearing the, 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 um, the what you call them, man? I tell you, this is OBS, sympathetic vibration from the drums. I had to move it into here because my wife wanted me to move stuff around this way for the Christmas holiday. Y'all know how that is for those of us who are married. You know, so, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to wrap it up in a bit. I'm going to do this unboxing and, and give you all a little background on, on this equipment. But, um, yo, George, I can't get away from George's call. You know, that was hilarious. See, it don't take a, much for a brother to get distracted. Judge, you got to go and start making stuff like that. I'm start laughing every time I look up at it now. But, yeah, man, this is whack. This is funny. But um, Mr. Mr. Smooth is moderating um, uh, today, be, having been a long-term user of the antelope, the antelope stuff. Yeah. I'm going to have to delete Judge's comment. Because yeah, I'll tell you, brother be OCD. He'd be looking up here and he's got to laugh, man. This is funny. But um, let's jump back. Uh, Del Mix it said, the stream is fine. Okay. We you show your size, but double check that you don't have double inputs on OBS. Uh, double inputs? No, I'm on a lab today, so I don't know, man. I'm 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 about to I'm about to um get rid of this OBS. Trust me. Lincoln Space and then Pennies B, and I'm think I'm after spring for this um ecam live. Uh, but you know. I'll be doing that over the holidays, so this way I can hit the new year running with this ecam if I have to. But um, most styles, okay. Uh, you have a message from Mr. Mr. Smooth, and let's jump forward. Lucy says his next piece is the Dangerous Backseat Cue. Yo, that's that's a that's definitely a a um a um good piece to have if you if it's a it's a good mastering EQ. You know, very good mastery EQ. You know, so that's definitely a purchase. You know, and I don't know how you guys feel about equipment when you buy it, but when you buy pieces like that, don't try it. I mean, unless it's like, you know, you got to get the money because you have a circumstance that, don't sell it, man. You know, don't sell it. You know, because that, it, that backseat cue is like, wow, man. It's a nice piece of kit, man. But, um... Let's jump forward. And most styles. Okay. And yeah, this is okay. That's y'all. Okay. At the source, what do I think of the slate interface and their whole mic modeling thing? I think it's um um. Do me a favor. 
Tell me if you are, are sub 30 years old or north of 40. If you're, well, north of 40 or south of 40 years old. And then I'll give you my response. Because um, I'm finding that different age groups have different opinions about the whole mic modeling thing. You know, I know it's come a long way. And, I, and, 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 and it has, really. Um, but tell me, you know, if you're north or south of 40 years old, and I'll give you my... It's 31. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now, I think for someone like yourself who, who probably spent limited time on a console and in that environment, it's great. Here's why. The horsepower that the, com that the computers can give the software nowadays is bar none. And I'm hearing a lot of these mics and they are coming crazy close to how the classics sound. So you're getting the best of both worlds. Even an antelope mic, the one that they had that models, you know, a lot of classic mics. I mean, the sound on those things is incredible. So imagine buying, you know, one mic, than having an unlimited modeling software. I know it's been tried in the past, but the computers have held up the software. So here we are, fast forward to right now, where the computers have like insane horsepower and you get a chance to model a mic. I'm hearing some of this stuff, it's like incredible, unbelievable, and how close they're coming in terms of the quality of sound you're able to get as you're transitioning from one mic model to the next it's like how close can y'all get you know so but someone your age it's, it's a great way to get your feet wet with the sound of a 47 without having to go out and spend an insane amount of money on a classic piece you know what i mean so i would say yeah it's, it's a good investment you know and plus you know if you're in a situation where you have to um you know, sometimes, you know, if you have a vocalist and you want to find the perfect mic, now you're a button push away. Before, you got to go in the mic locker, pull up another mic, plug in the preamp. Now, a button push away, bam, you like that? No. Bam, you like that? No. Bam, you like that? Oh, yeah, I think I like that. So, I would say try it, man. Because these computers are insanely fast. Ins That's why I'm not even getting an HD system anymore. Doesn't make sense. First, I'm not really big on the plugins. Second, you know, even like I was saying, last week when I was in Pro Tools, so, you know, it's just a workflow thing that I've been doing for so long that I'm used to doing. And I told you, I've owned every plugin. When I bought my HD3 system, I think I bought the suite of plugins by every manufacturer. And every time, you know what I would reach for? Not the Focus, right? Not the Massenberg EQs. I was reaching for the, the um, Avid plugins, the Avid EQs, because they worked. So, you know, <laughs> you know, you guys got the best of both you youngsters, man. You got the best of both worlds, man. It is definitely a good time to be 31. Good time to be 31. But, you know, I'm gonna give you a bit of advice, so, and I hope you grab it. <clears throat> You might be in, in, in a digital environment, but don't limit yourself to that. Take yourself up out of your environment and if you can get into a place, get into a actual facility so that you have some level of intelligent comparison for anything you want to do in the future. Whether that's buying a mic, a preamp, or whatever have you. Any upgrades you wanna to make to your place, you now have a point of focus as to what a pro environment would sound like. Also, if you can't do that, at least buy yourself a turntable and listen, listen, bit my tongue, listen to vinyl. You know what I mean? If you can, listen to vinyl. That'll give you a good frame of reference as to what analog sounded like. So you're like, oh, I think I, you know, you know, hear what you're trying to say. You know, and then you can get with somebody who appreciated if you listen to early Motown, you know? If you listen to um, early, uh, let's, who else? Go back and listen to some old Frank Sinatra. You know, such as um, Nice and Easy. Get the Nice and Easy. You go on iTunes, listen to Nice and Easy, as a matter of fact. Nice and Easy. 
by Frank Sinatra. You know, that's a good frame of reference for analog. You know, so, you know, do your ears that favor. Train them. You know, just like as a jazz drummer, I had to listen to, you know, Tony Williams and, 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 and um, you know, um, Papa Joe and Philly Joe Jones, you know, and um, um, so many others that came before them. You know, you know, Big Sid Catlick, Cadwick and all these other guys, you know, these are points of references that you have to have to say, oh, this is why that one phrases that one and, and why you're encouraged to phrase in a particular way. Elvin Jones, you know, you have to have a point of reference, you know. So um, that's, you know, going to be a good thing for you. OK, so let's jump. Most styles says he would be interested in how you're planning to rope my external gear with the 32 line of IO. I see some guys ditch the patch panel if they have enough IOs. I can't. I do have enough IO. I know how I'm going to work for me, for my projects. But on occasion, I might have someone come through that has a rack unit and they need to plug in somewhere. And I don't go in the back of my equipment. You know, you got to plug, plug in through the panel because the next thing you know, you shorten my stuff out. So. You know, um, normally they'll plug, you know, TRS directly into the patch bay to get from one point or another. You know, it's just some folks are like that, you know. You know, so. I um. just <laughs> says New York, New York, yeah. Yeah, man, you got to listen to them classics. Um, listen to a Nightingale sang in, in Berkeley Square, you know. Those are good. Um. I'll put a list of classic songs that you really should listen to because they were recorded in analog and a lot of times it was recorded with equipment that was made in vac with vacuum tubes and it has a character. Once your ears start picking up on it, be like, oh, yeah, I think I want to try a tube preamp, you know? So do yourself that favor. So let's jump forward. Well, Mr. And Mr. Smooth got some stuff here. Listen to this, your studio workflow, Antelope for Ryan. With the Neve uh, 1073 SPX, I like it. Whoa, the Tube Tech. That's it. Listen, you got my um, Barry D's chain here. Look him up on iTunes. I executive produced his um his um his award-winning record um, when we got the dub. Um, he likes the Neve 1073 and the Tube Tech CL as well. And the Manly Reference. Yeah, that's a nice mic, man. Really nice mic. Unique the poet says he has a hybrid. Yes. Okay. LA, uh-huh. Clark and Tech, yes. I like that. You know, um, the blueberries, I'm not sure. Is that the large mic? Because I know they're hard to find. Hard to find. And if you find them, you're going to pay a fortune for them things, man. That's the real, the first one I think that they put out, the real big one. Let me know if, that, if that's the one. Yeah, the sound for vocals. I would imagine, yeah, Unique the poet, I would imagine the sound is crazy, man. Yeah, man. Most style says it's all about Motown. 61 amp, wow. Wow. Yeah, I gotta get with y'all guitar players, man, because um, this amp thing with y'all is a science, man. Yeah. So, any further questions with regards to what you're working with? Are you on the low end? Are you on the mid with the Zen Tour, which is a beautiful piece of equipment? Are you dealing with the beast of 64 channels? Wow, that's crazy. That is sick. Are you on high end number two with just 32 IO? 32 IO. Mr. And Mrs. Smooth is fielding a few questions for me today. I appreciate his input. As a long time antelope Orion user, and we have Fizz Ant in the hizzy. Our antelopes. Uh huh. I have your Ryan. Whoa. 2017. Did I miss this discussion already? No. You can chime in, man. Yo, you coming in with some bullets, B? You got the. Okay. Let me know what your experience has been. Okay. Dell mixes is my audio. Okay. I'm not sure if you're talking about my audio, but if so, that's a good thing. Um, but let's just jump back to Fizz. Entertainment, I guess that would be okay. He says he has the Orion Studio Rev 2 2017. Chime in with your experiences and what it's been like for you. 
the community would like to know. Okay, uh, B3Z says he is the blue kiwi. Okay, all right. Yes. I would like 32 channels. I don't think many have. They are used that many, but the hand was. That's true. It's always better to have more, man. You know, I'm finding. You know, people are like, oh, you need an HD3. And once I got. I got a um, documentary film project. Oh, good God. And then I, another mix to picture for a live concert where somebody decided to record stuff and redo tracks and redo. You need that horse. You need the ability to record over 100 tracks, man. If you've ever opened up one of those sessions, man, you better have that. Your system's got to be able to run smooth and handle all of that data without any problems. So to your point, it's better to have too much than too little. Okay, Dell Mixes is when I get a chance to see my camera speed and audio, if it's HDMI, yes it is, but it's going into a switcher and I'm using this um, OBS software, which like I said, is about to become history. Okay, right on the camera mic. It shouldn't be on the camera mic because I got a lab on today and I'm plugged right into the unit and the, the red on button is on. So, no, I don't think it's feeding back. I don't think so. I don't believe it is because I don't have a loop. It's not looping back in. But um, we're going to wrap it up in a bit anyway. So, I appreciate you all for um, um, definitely sticking around. Mr. and Mrs. Smooth has quite a system. Quite a system. Lindell EQs, I mean, Lindell Equipment, 77. Okay. Mog EQs, which is killer. Um, dangerous D box, okay, wow. Drummer compressors, which are nice. Empiricals fat soul, which is another beast. The two bus, the Frankenstein bento, yeah, and that's another company that y'all shouldn't be sleeping on. Frankenstein, I'm telling you, they got some stuff. I have their artistic mic pre, which is modeled after the um, API 5, uh, did the model up again? 512. I'm speaking quicker then my brain is able to process the information. So, because I'm trying to multitask here. But, um, yes, cool drizzle. Everybody <laughs> said my audio got a little delayed. Yeah, man, thanks for coming to the party, B. But um, me and OBS and had a bit of a falling out. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm i about to get them up for Ecamm Live. So if y'all see me on something new, that's that'll be the deal, you know. But, um... Okay, so let's jump. Fizz Entertainment. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, the Frankenstein pre is pretty good. Very good. Um, it's a good pre for I'm finding out that the 512 works good on um guitars. I've had a lot of success. Toms. I mean recording toms. Um not so much vocal. I wasn't digging it too much on vocal, but you know. Okay, you should do a demo of it. There's nothing out there like that of it of the Frankenstein. Maybe I will. Um, I'll call in a friend, um, a bass player friend of mine. Maybe I will. That's thanks for the um suggestion. I, I appreciate that. Maybe I will, you know, because it is you know, very little people don't really um know who the company is, you know, and they're making really good stuff, you know, really good stuff. So I think we've covered enough ground here. Mr. And Mrs. Smooth has been very helpful in terms of, um, you know, because he says he's con upgrading to the 64. Okay. Okay, brother. You know, you're going to have to spend that money on them um, D subs, B. Yes, sir. Oh, Alabama Major, what's up, man? Am I thinking about up? No, no, I'm no. Are you thinking about upgrading to this Apple Silicon next? Not anytime soon. For you know, that's some scary stuff. If you gotta, you get a call tomorrow. And next thing you know, you gotta work for somebody, and then you ain't had a chance to test out your system. You know, and in a in a situation like that, you have to be on a already stable system, and then buy that as a test unit before you install it permanently 
you have to, you have to spend at least a month and a half making sure that you are going to be able to run this thing in a stressful circumstance before you offer it up to a client. Because if it screws up on you, you're going to pay that money back, period. And you got no time to hear about why your equipment ain't working on the session. Sorry. Can I have my money back, please? <laughs> you know? Okay, Mo Style said he wants to thanks for the recommendation of the LCT240. You are welcome, you know? And yes, it is an awesome microphone. They're another company that's doing things, you know? Mr. Mr. Smooth. Got a friend that wants to buy and build his own cables. What do I think? Buy in bulk and build our own cables. Uh, Mr. Mr. Smooth, yo, if, what's the company um, that everybody buys these D-subs from? I forget. Um, that's Niche Marketing. That's Niche Marketing 101 right there. You know, I'll put the name in the description. Um, Sylvia Massey uses them a lot. She buys all her cables from them. That's big business. You know, if you got the patience for it, yo, you can make some serious cash at that. Custom-made cables? Like I tell you, it's cheap to make. If you got the patience and the equipment, you can make some money on that. I'd be, I'd buy. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta definitely got a customer in me. Yeah, man. So yeah, man. If you, if you got the patience for it, and you want to market it, Facebook ain't costing you no money to market. Instagram, brand it, brand it properly. You can make a fortune with that. You know, it's just that. You know, you got to be dedicated. You can't be, you know, dipping your toe into the, you know, water trying to play. You want to play, you're going to have to play hardball. You have to go in on folk and you're going to have to, you know, this is your business, you know. And if word gets out that you're making good stuff, people will patronize you, you know. Everybody wants to custom thing, you know what I mean? That's why so many of these companies, like, um... Retro, I don't know how long. Some of these companies I've never heard of until recently. And it ain't like I've been in a cave. It's like, you know, I, I know what I gravitate towards, but a lot of people are using boutique equipment for a reason, like Loop Trotter. I don't know how long that company been around. I could tell you they weren't around 20-something years ago, you know? But, um, yeah, man. I would say, that, yeah, if you want to, man, do that, do that. I encourage anybody to be self-sufficient. I ain't had a boss in over 30 years, so do it, you know? Uh, let's go. Alavon, I'm going to answer your question, and then I'm going to do the unboxing. Okay, so let's go to Alavon, who asks, any thoughts on the Heritage Baby Ram versus Spring for a Coleman audio controller? Okay. Good. As we are talking about, um, this is something I noticed, and I'm most and I'm most out. Um, Mr. Mr. Smooth, you can comment on this as well. When I <laughs> now, I'm not going to get into all the technical bibble babble about class A, class A B, and class D amplification. That's a topic for the tech heads and for another day. Or if you want to sit around with a bunch of people that want to talk about this. That's for that time. But I will say this about class D amplification, which is in those um, those um, monitors back there. Not in the, the, um, the, you know, not my, um, what you call it? I'm having a brain freeze for a minute because I'm trying to make a point. But not my Mackies, but the, the JBLs, okay? The JBLs have class D amplification in it. Now class D amplification, what it does, it manages, um, it's more efficient in terms of how it manages the audio signal. You give me a little, I'll give you a little. You give me a lot, I'll give you a lot. Okay? So what I did when I first got the 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 um the antelope unit, I plugged the monitors directly in and Knowing that I had 131 dB on the output of this unit, as well as it being 
outputting or having the ability to output 24 decibels of, of um, power amplitude wise. When I plugged that thing in, those monitors came alive like I have never heard them before. Now, to your point about what monitor controller to buy, here's my advice, okay? If you can, if you get these units, do not. I am struggling right now, guys, to be honest with you, dealing with this Personas unit. It is on borrowed time. I just don't have the two grand right now for the dangerous monitor system. That's what I'm upgrading to. I didn't want to go with the, um, the current dangerous system for summing and monitoring all in one because I want to be able to keep things separate and compartmentalize each individual component. That's just the way I enjoy working. But if you get these units, try not to get an inferior monitor controller. Now, the pros and the cons versus audience versus um, heritage. Here's a rule of thumb whenever you are buying equipment. Buy from a company that that is their single line of business. Okay? Their only line of business is making that thing. All right? Apogee started out with great converters and clocks, as did Orion. They were a clock maker before they were interface, you know, business. Um, JBL are known for great monitors. Adam makes great monitors. Genelec, they make great monitors. You wouldn't buy a microphone from Genelec. Why? That's not their line of business. What's my point? My point is, is that if you're going to make that investment on a $1,000 interface, don't bastardize it by putting a, and I'm not saying personas is bad. Before I get more hate mail, let's just clear that up. Don't bastardize it by putting an inferior monitor controller behind it because that's robbing you of the purity of the sound. Is there a difference? Have I noticed a difference in tonality by going through that thing? Yes, 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 because I plugged the monitors directly into the unit when I first got it, and I was stunned. I was like, oh my God, these things came alive. And my impression was that class D amplification was just shy. It just didn't give out the beef and the girth that I was looking for. Nope, wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. Class D amplification is able to handle the horsepower you throw at it. You throw a little, you get a little in the output. You throw a lot, it'll give you back a lot. The bottom end is so solid on them JBLs now. I got rid of the Mackies. I was used to using a six and a half with the sub. I was like, okay, the Mackies, y'all gonna have to sit for a bit. So I put the JBLs in place. I'm happy with the base. It's solid, focused, the mid-range, perfect, the high-end, wide, and deep. So don't, yeah, the D-Box Plus, man. If you, if you, got a, if you want an all-in-one unit, get that dangerous music unit. Invest. Invest. At least if you, if you get into a situation where you got to, okay, I need the money. You know, light bill is due, car note is due, and I ain't got no money coming in, so I got to sell to you. You're going to get a good resale on it. You know, but don't, you know, they say if you buy cheap, you're going to buy it twice. And in certain instances, it just doesn't make sense. It's like buying cheap tires, you know, and putting them on a Ferrari. You wouldn't do that. You don't want to test the roster, but you're going to put some little cheap, you know, run pops on them. That makes no sense. You know what I mean? So if you're going to spend that kind of money, get the D-Box. Get the Dangerous Music D-Box or get the Dangerous Monitoring System or something of that caliber. As a matter of fact, um, Antelope's monitoring system is no joke. The only reason why I am, I don't want to buy it is because it's going to occupy another USB port. I'd rather not. I'd rather have an independently operated unit and that's what the dangerous is going to get me. So I'm about to drop another two grand for those of y'all interested, you know, and knowing. But to your point, the Heritage unit is good, but I would buy the Audient first because Audient is our console makers. I know I've said a lot, 
and I hope I answered your question, but I'm going to buy a console maker's version of a monitor controller before I buy a um, someone who's dabbling in preamps, dabbling in summing mixes, dabbling in dabbling, dabbling, dabbling. You can't be a jack of all trades. You can't. You know, you can't. You know, you, you're mastering no one thing. You know, and heritage makes good stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just scared of buying from companies that are all over the place. They don't have one solid business model. You know? You know? There's a reason why Timberland, you know, reigned supreme even to this day as a producer. He's good at what he does. Period. He's not a multi you're not gonna see him doing this, 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 and then trying to produce this type of record, that type of record, and the third. He's a solid hip hop producer. You want Solid hip hop tracks, that's the guy to call. You know, so. Um, anything Neve is great. <laughs> Period. Because it got Rupert's history behind it, you know? Um, what about the Behringer monitor controllers then? Mm, nah. Uh uh. Not if you're going to put it on this unit. It doesn't make sense. The unit is able to handle a, a top um, input of 24 dB. So if your the output of your unit falls short of that, you're feeding less power to maybe class D amplification, which requires the horsepower to give you that that um the full range and the capability of the monitor. You know, like I said, you don't want to bastardize the output with something that's whack. Because you're gonna be like, yo, why the bass don't sound? Why the bass? Why? You know, you know, you trying to drive the Ferrari with run pops, and you won't want to know why you're getting a flat every five miles. That's the reason why you got run pops on. Buy some real tires, buy some Pirellis, or some solid, you know, Hankooks or one of those, and then you will get performance out of the car that you expect. You know, so you know, garbage in really means garbage out, man. You know, but um, Behringer, you know, it's good in certain circumstances. Everybody can't start at 10. You know, my point that I'm making right now is that if you're using a unit like, you know, the Zen Tour, that's a very well made piece of equipment that could put out some serious audio. So why would you, you know, Put some weak monitor controller behind that. You know? You want compatibility if you can get it. You know, so that's what you want to do. You know? Coleman units, yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, he's the guy, I was talking with him, and um, his shop is out in Long Island um, at the last AES. He was the MCI um, service guy for New York City back when I was a kid. He was the guy that you would call to the service um, MCI consoles, which was bought out by Sony, you know? So, he's the guy who's servicing consoles, making console-like equipment, to my point, okay? He has that experience, he has that knowledge of how to bring good product to the market. You know, the only thing he is, he told me he's a, a um, one-man operation, pretty much. You know, he hand solders everything himself. And that's not economies of scale if you're trying to compete in big business. But he does have a niche clientele like Jimmy Douglas and um, quite a few others that are using his equipment. So, yes. Okay, so let me jump to the unboxing. And I'm going to give you all a bit of advice. Okay? There's people out there that have no clue as to the quality of the equipment that they own that they're getting rid of, the quality, they have no clue as to the heritage, excuse me, excuse me, the heritage of the equipment that they own, the legacy, excuse me, or the potential for historic resaleability. I'm saying a lot. There's a reason why these old needs, um, go for 
the amount of money that they do because they have a character to them and equipment as it ages takes on that character. So I was able to find a gym this week that I had been watching on Reverb for some time and uh, I made the young man an offer and he said, oh, it sounds pretty good, you know, if you like this equipment. And I was able to find, for a mere pittance, unwrap her, for a mere pittance, and I said to one of my assistants recently, if I could get the fourth one at the right price, girlfriend is as good as boy. And I found the fourth one at the right price, and I snatched it immediately because these things are going to be worth a lot of money in the very near future. Let me tell you. Trust me on that. Mark my word. What I purchased was... Who can guess what it is? Tell me in the comments. I want to know. It's all about, yeah. Yeah, man. Okay, who's going to tell me? Oh, God, this thing is clean as a whistle, B. Okay, hold on. Okay, let me see. Uh, anybody? Let me take this. If my assistant Nathaniel was online, he would know what I'm talking about. I bought the fourth of them all. Focus right. Red. Mic free. Now, Warren, why did you want four of them? Let me tell you all something about this unit. Guy said it was in smoke free swill. It's not like it's been, you know, toasting around something. Um, this unit has in the back on the output. You see where this little screw is right here? This sitting on this unit right here is a Carnhill output transformer, okay? On the input has a very clean Lundhal sweet Swiss made transformer. When I tell you, man, you hear this thing on some horns with a ribbon mic, oh God, this is like, and see with technology, you always want the shortest point between A and B. It don't get no shorter than a single this. These units were going for, okay, major, major money back when they were first released, like $1,000 a piece. I was able to nickel this guy down to pennies on the dollar to get the fourth one, and he made a joke as to say that it wasn't really that good. I'm like, okay. She may not be good for you, but she'd be great for me because I was looking for the fourth one. This rounds out. I have this thing with symmetry. I can't have three of anything. I have to have two of everything or four of everything. So this will be the fourth unit that will go in my um, rack, my chassis. I'm about to buy another, you know, API chassis pretty soon. Uh, you all might have seen the video about the others that were perpetrating that was causing electromagnetic hum. And um, this is quite a unit to buy. Now, advice. If you see a unit like this, anywhere and you have a 500 series um, chassis and if it's going for sub $500 snatch it they're not making these anymore okay first of all it has the Rupert Neve legacy I already told you what's on the output this little nut is holding a Carnhill transformer and on the front end it's a Lund hole so you have a clean end and a somewhat creamy fat output if you see it for five, less than $500, buy them. In a few years, I can guarantee you these will be worth more than $1,000 if you hold on to them long enough. They have a sweet, fat character that, I mean, the closest you're going to come to sounding this sweet would probably be a 1073. And Focusrite Red has the Rupert Neve history and legacy along with the, um, the ISA 1. You know, I keep finding these things on eBay for $400, $300. So if you see these and you think, oh, is it a good premium? This is an outstanding addition to any 500 series rack. Not to mention 
the resellability in the future. If you should need the cash, you can get more than five or $600 in about five years on these things. I'm telling you, they used to retail for about a thousand. Not anymore, they don't even make them anymore. So I'm gonna pop this little bad boy into the chassis after we're done and Merry Christmas to me. That was quite a find and I'm glad that I'm able to round out the entire um, crew with member number four. So, <laughs> some, hey, you said you got some OCD in the studio. Yeah, I can't look at anything in threes, man. Can't, it has to be twos, fours, and most um, facilities that you'll look at, if you go on any of the Produce Like a Pro, studio tours or what's the other other songs other people's songs i think it's the other guy who does studio tours you see they buy two ever everything you know you know so mr mr smooth is gonna leave us with a merry christmas and i appreciate all of you um i'm not sure i have one other video coming up this week and um That'll probably be the last video for the year because I need to spend some time with my family. We're going to be doing a lot of um, virtual visiting. Um, and um, I just want to tell you guys that I appreciate you all tuning in. Um, without, you know, you guys coming, there will be no me. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smooth today for fielding the questions. I wish that YouTube would build into a, its... Um, software and ability to if you're having someone moderate you know they could you know be seen many of you who have arbitrary um um avatars really need to put your picture up there so we can see and maybe put a face with um the 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 name and that would be good you know so that this way we can have more of a um more of a connection you know if you will and um and with that in mind I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. Uh, stay safe. If you have to get together after you get back home, don't forget to quarantine for 14 days. It's the responsible thing to do if you're traveling. And um, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Merry Christmas to you and yours. And again, don't forget to say hello to your extended family. Take care, guys.